All right, this video lesson is to teach you how to do solution stoichiometry. Now, I know stoichiometry is not a great word for some of you because it's very mathematical, but what you really need to, to recognize is that as we get further and further into chemistry, all those things you learned about chemical reactions before, they don't go away. They just get amplified. They're, they're the foundation for being able to build uh, build new things and new concepts, and everything kind of plays together. Nothing goes away. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that as we go here. Now, we're going to have a description of a reaction, and what's different about solutions is we get some different data to start with, some different measurements, because a typical solution has a concentration, and then we have a certain volume that we pour out. So we're going to be starting with some measurements that look a little bit different. The actual stoichiometry is all what you've done before. We just have to kind of move from the beginning in a slightly different direction to interpret what's there. So what we're always going to start with is reading this situation and see if we can write a balanced equation to represent that. We're going to turn a paragraph into an equation. So this says we've got 50 milliliters of 0.8 molar silver nitrate and it's mixed with excess sodium sulfate. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is write those two things out and then let's just make a balanced equation to show what would happen if we put them together. So I start with silver nitrate, Ag. NO3, and I'll put parentheses around the nitrate just so that some of you will recognize that a little bit easier. And that's a solution. So I'll put AQ, just like we did earlier in one of our previous lessons. I'm going to mix that with sodium sulfate. Now sodium is Na, sulfate is SO4, okay? but we have to remember our charges, the oxidation numbers. Sodium's a plus one, Sulfate's a minus two. So we look this stuff up and we go, hey, that doesn't fit right. I'm going to need two sodiums to combine with one sulfate. So it's really important that you do that. You can't just forget about that part. That's really crucial because everything else depends on these numbers. That's also an aqueous solution. Aqueous, aqueous, remember you can say it however you want to. Okay, now, we put those together. This is double displacement uh, in its format or double replacement if you want to say it that way, which means our metals and our nonmetals are both going to switch partners. Okay, so silver is going to come over here and form with the sulfate. Sodium is going to go combine with the nitrate. But when they do that, they form in sometimes different ratios depending on their charges. Okay, they make new compounds. So silver is going to go with sulfate. I've got AgSO4, but now I've got to look up those charges. Sulfate's a negative 2, silver's a plus 1. So I'm going to need two silvers. I also have sodium with nitrate. Sodium, nitrate, sodium's a plus one, nitrate's a minus one. Those fit together nicely, so I only need one of each. Now, we go right back to something we worked on in a previous video. We want to take a look at our solubility chart. These both start out as aqueous solutions. These, we have to figure out, do we get something new? Because if, if neither one of these become a solid precipitate, then we don't really have a reaction that happens at all. We just have mixtures of different ions just floating together in the same container. So if I look up sodium nitrate, I'm going to see on this chart that it also turns out to be an aqueous solution. Okay. But I look at silver sulfate, and that one happens to be a solid. So there is my precipitate. Okay, That is the important thing. That's the solid gooey stuff that forms out of two ions that were dis previously dissolved in solution. So this reaction does actually happen. Let's t pay special attention to our numbers. Okay, we got to balance this. I see two sodiums on this side, so I'm going to need a two right here. And that gives me two nitrates, so I'm going to need a two over here. That gives me two silvers, but I've got two silvers. Remember, that's not an accident, that's chemistry. Okay, and this right here, two nitrates, two nitrates, everything else seems to fit. I got one sulfate, one sulfate, it's all balanced now. I'm going to put in these ratios just so we remember what they are. So it's a two to one and a one to two ratio. Now, we got this whole bunch of chemistry out here. Let's not lose sight of the big picture. What are we actually doing? So when I reread this, I notice that I have a certain amount of silver nitrate to start with. That's this one right here. Okay. So I'm starting with that particular amount. Okay. I've got 50 milliliters, and I've got a concentration of 0.8 molar. Now it says it's mixed with excess sodium sulfate. So it's telling us what it's mixed with, but that word excess basically means that there's more than enough of this, but there's probably too much. And so we don't really have an amount of sodium sulfate, so it's not something we're going to analyze. I'm just going to, it's there, but I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to accidentally look at the wrong thing. Okay? Now, 
The question actually says, what mass of precipitate is formed? Okay, And I want you to be careful in your homework. That's the same way I'm going to ask you these questions. I'm wanting you to find the solid, gooey stuff. That's this right here. So you have to use your solubility chart to figure out what the precipitate is. That's what we're going to analyze. We don't want to pay attention to the spectator ions that are still floating around in the solution. So what I've done is I've taken four things and I've narrowed it down to two. I'm starting with silver nitrate and I'm going to try to figure out how much silver sulfate it makes. Okay. Now, all of that is stuff we've done before. You've interpreted all this the same way. Nothing is new yet. The only new part comes in how we begin our stoichiometry. We need to take our starting data, our measurements for this solution, and we need to turn those into moles. So we're going to remember that molarity equals moles divided by liters. Right here I've got a molarity, and right here I've got something that could be turned into liters. So I'm going to solve this for moles. I'm going to say molarity, which is 0 0.8, equals moles, which is my x, I don't know that, divided by 50 milliliters. Well, that needs to be in liters on the bottom, so I'm going to put 0 0.05 liters. Remember to move your decimal three spots. So I've taken this data, plugged it in here, and now I'm going to solve for that missing component. All I have to do to solve for that missing component is I have to cross multiply here. Okay, and basically moles gets multiplied by 1, which doesn't change it. So my moles is going to equal 0 0.8 times 0 0.05. And that gives me 0 0.04 moles. Now keep track of what that actually is. That is moles of silver nitrate. So I'm going to write that. That's going to be my starting value. So I have 0 0.04 moles AgNO3. It's really important you write down what those labels are or you get mixed up what they represent and it turns into a math problem with no meaning. So this is what I start with. Now when we began stoichiometry in other ways, the first step was always turning our beginning measurement into moles. Well, here we've done that, but we didn't have to really write it out as part of the stoichiometry process. We just did it as part of the molarity equation. So now that I have it in moles, my goal is to turn it into silver sulfate. And once this is in moles, I can turn it into anything else in the equation I want. So my next step is going to be turning it to moles of silver sulfate. And notice I am writing all the details in this. I'm not abbreviating that because I need to know what it's made of. I'm going to take moles of silver nitrate, and turn it to moles of silver sulfate, and then once I get it to moles, I can turn it to whatever I want, and the easiest way to measure this precipitate, since it's a solid, is going to be grams. So grams of silver sulfate. Okay. So in our typical stoichiometry we did before, we always went grams to moles to moles to grams. Well, in this case, we don't need to have the first step. We've already got it into moles. We already did that right here, so there's no need to do it again. We're going to start with moles, and then we immediately jump to the new stuff. So right here is where the precipitate comes in. So I'm going to write PPT. PPT. So notice that the first measurement represents our beginning solution, but the next two things are all dealing with the precipitate. We, all, we make a change, and we're looking at that stuff now. Now, the decisions have all been made. Once I've figured out the steps I'm going to take, moles to moles to grams of these substances, well, now all i got to do is just carry my units down diagonally. This becomes dimensional analysis. So this goes down diagonally, and I get moles AgNO3 here. And down here, I get moles Ag2SO4. <clears throat> okay, we basically have two conversion factors to put in here. This one right here, mole to mole of two different things, always comes from the balanced equation. Look at the blue writing. It's one to two mole ratio. One goes with silver sulfate, two goes with silver nitrate. This is why it's important you have the labels correct so you know which number goes on top and which one goes on bottom. It's the same ones that match up here. Okay. Our last part <clears throat> is one mole of any substance comes from the periodic table. We can see what its molar mass is. Silver is... 108 times 2, sulfur is 32, oxygen is 16 times 4. So we're going to add all those up. When we add all those up, we get a pretty heavy compound. This weighs 312 grams for every one mole. Remember, one mole, anytime we use the periodic table, we're talking about one mole of something. 
So I look at this and go, okay, moles cancels there, moles cancels there. I'm left with grams of silver sulfate, which was my precipitate. Make sure that the precipitate is what we end up with. That's what we're looking for. If you make a mistake somewhere, that's usually the case. You start looking at the wrong thing, and you don't actually have the precipitate that you're analyzing. So I'm going to multiply the numbers on top, divide by the numbers on the bottom. I'm going to ignore the ones. We've done this before. And I end up with 6.24 grams silver sulfate. That is my precipitate. That's how much solid gooey stuff would form out of this reaction. Okay. Now, I know there's a lot there. But everything here you've done before, we're just putting together skill sets from earlier topics, and they all kind of collide into one application. So the important things you got to make sure you do, write a balanced equation, and don't forget to check out the charges and get the correct formulas. If you mess up on that, it affects everything else. Okay, so we get the correct balanced equation. Next thing you do is you read the problem, and you make sure you, you know what you're starting with. Circle it. You know that you're going to end with the precipitate, circle that. And then ignore those other two. Don't accidentally start analyzing something we really aren't looking for. Okay, They're there, but we just don't want to pay attention to them. Next step, take your molarity information and turn it into moles. And then we do a two-step stoichiometry to figure out how much precipitate was formed. Okay, In your homework, you're going to see a few problems that have answers with them. Please do those first so you can check the answer. And if you get something really close then we probably maybe rounded something a little bit different here. It's no big deal. But if you get substantially different, there is a reason. Go back and check mole ratios. Check to see that you're actually looking for the precipitate. Okay. Check to make sure that you didn't mess up with your decimals in this stuff right here. Okay. A lot of places things can go wrong. Lots of details. Okay. But this is how we do solution stoichiometry.